This review was filmed during the 2023 WGA and SAG After Strikes. Without the labor of the writers and actors currently on strike, the works being covered here wouldn't exist. I fully support both the WGA and SAG After in their fight for fair treatment and compensation against a system that continually denies them such. While a full boycott has not been called for, SAG After has asked that everyone who does media about film and TV refrain from promoting struck content during this time. From what I can tell based on guidelines released, independent reviews do not constitute promotion of work, but as critical assessment of a work of art. Any praise I give to these works should be seen purely as praise for the artists, writers, and actors who created it. If anything, the praise is emphasizing that the writers, actors, and other artists deserve more compensation because they are who make these works possible. Additionally, this video was not made using any studio-provided screeners or materials. Do not support any studios during the strike. If you want to know more information, there are links down in the description for you to follow. This episode truly was special. It, it, it just was really special. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest Minty Reviews and we are here for the next episode of Ahsoka. This episode is episode number 5 titled Shadow Warrior. And as I mentioned in the little cold open, this episode was something special. It, it just, it had that feeling to it. I mean, it, it was a long episode. It was for sure a long episode. It was 51 minutes long, give or take, with credits and everything. But it, it just had a feeling to it uh, all the way through for everything it did. This episode, it, it was a very, very special episode. And it felt very, very good. And, you know, let's just get into it, shall we? <laughs> let's just get into it. Because, like, I don't know how, how much non-spoilery stuff I can say here. So, as I do normally with the reviews, we're going to do a non-spoiler section first. And then a spoiler section afterwards. So, we're going to start with non-spoilers here first. So, non-spoilers. And this episode was... Was very special it felt like a very special episode and it felt like a very very good episode it was a very very good episode from start to finish it was an incredible episode filled with a lot of really really good moments um a lot of really really great character stuff some amazing star wars stuff as well in there that that i will probably talk about in the spoiler section some amazing music by kevin kiner absolutely amazing music some phenomenal photography like like cinematography here and some phenomenal directing by Dave Filoni it, it this this was a this was a peak episode of Star Wars of any of the Star Wars series like animated live action any of the Star Wars this was a peak episode of Star Wars for sure and it was it was so good it was so so good um, everything about it just felt cinematic. It felt cinematic. It felt like it was something that should have been seen on like a big screen, which I know that there are some theaters that actually, that actually were showing this episode uh, as like a special screening, which is really cool. Uh, obviously not any of my local ones, but that's why I'm here in my room doing my react, uh, doing my review here after having just watched on Disney+. Plus. Th this was a very cinematic, very good episode, and th this episode alone kind of helps bolster up the reason why there are Star Wars series on Disney+. Plus. Plus, at least, at least to me, is this feels like one of those types of episodes, and that there, it just had a very big energy to it that really felt so good, so so good to watch. And man, Rosario Dawson is now killing it as Ahsoka. I will say she she is killing it as Ahsoka. Mary Elizabeth Winstead feels like Hera now, and and those those two are feeling like their roles, like for sure, they are feeling like their roles, hundred percent. And yeah, this episode was great. This episode was great. So before I can say anything else or start spoiling anything, let's just get into the spoilers, shall we? So spoilers here, spoilers here. So in three, two, one, Ahsoka the White. Let's just, let's just say that, Ahsoka the White. So to start off with that, there was an interview a while ago. I don't know exactly when it was, but there was an interview before the show came out where Dave Filoni basically said that he views Ahsoka Tano as like Gandalf. Uh, as like Gandalf is in Lord of the Rings, where it's this, uh, she's this really important character, this really powerful character that has to go through a trial first to then come back even stronger. And as we basically saw from last episode with her basically dying and going to the world between worlds uh, and seeing seeing some type of either force projection, memory, astral thing, world between worlds, force, go we don't know, whatever Anakin was, he never explained, but we get to see Anakin. We get to see basically her projection of Anakin. And they actually make a little joke about it where, where she's like, wow, you look so young. And then Anakin's like, you look old. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the version of Anakin that, that she 
remembers that she's seen, which makes perfect sense. Um, it's not the brother, though. Wouldn't be surprised if it technically was the brother, but, you know, whatever. We're even not going into that. They didn't explain the world between worlds and explain any of that, and I didn't think they were going to, unfortunately, because, uh, no, no, don't need to, don't need to bog, bog it down by explaining the, the lore or the, the mystical stuff. But, basically, to, to go back to the Gandalf thing. So, Dave Filoni basically sees Ahsoka as Gandalf. And Gandalf, if you don't know Lord of the Rings, which, you Lord of the Rings, if you don't know Lord of the Rings, Gandalf has to fight the Balrog, which is this big demon creature, basically, um, and fight this this Balrog. And he dies. He dies during this fight. It's a very big, epic fight that happens, but he dies during this fight. However, Gandalf then comes back uh, as a more powerful version of himself, as instead of Gandalf the Grey, he becomes Gandalf the White. Where he's basically this, he's basically a god at that point. He's basically like this godlike wizard. And Dave Filoni kind of sees Ahsoka in the same way, where Ahsoka had to fight this trial against Anakin to, in, in a sense, what they do here is she finishes her training. Uh, she finally gets to finish her Jedi training with Anakin and get that final lesson from Anakin in one way or another by visiting her past. And oh boy. Okay, so in the world between worlds, we'll get to the other stuff with Hera and Jason and and, and Captain uh, Teva in a bit, but we, we need to focus on the Ahsoka stuff here because this is, this, is the, this is the important stuff of this episode. So in the world between worlds, where she's talking with Anakin, they they start to fight. And it's not really a... F it's a fight, but it's it's training. And it's Anakin basically being like, hey, you never finished your training. I'm going to finish your training now. And Ahsoka being Ahsoka is like, I, what do you mean? You can't really do that. Like, like, I don't know what else you can teach me. And there's a lot you can teach. And they go into... They go into Ahsoka's past. And we literally see the Clone Wars. <laughs> we actually drop into Clone Wars. It's very foggy, very dusty. Um, very non un, nondescript where they are at, but it's supposedly one of the first battles that um, that Anakin took Snips um, into uh, to to see war, unfortunately. And they brought back the same actress who played young Gamora in the Avengers movies to play young Ahsoka, which was really funny. I just think that was pretty great. So now she's played two young alien characters, but she looked good. At first, I was like, okay, a little bit, a little bit off. But as she grew, as 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 the episode moved on, I'm like, no, 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 she she's good. She she's good. She's she's good as as young Ahsoka. She she's fine. She she had that feeling too. She she felt like Ahsoka, which was really great. But we get to see Anakin taking her through her memory uh, her memory of, the, of this time and trying to teach her this lesson of, uh, of of what her purpose is what what she's there for why is she a Jedi kind of a thing it almost seems like Anakin's not there like he's part of the memory still and she's fully there and conscious and kind of like lucid about it but basically throughout that we get we get through that and then it goes from her as a kid as, as kid snips to her as basically um teenage snips young adult snips from like season seven of clone wars where we see the siege of mandalore and again it's all foggy all dusty we don't get to get really see anything but she it's, it's the siege of mandalore where anakin wasn't he wasn't actually there and it's basically ahsoka telling him like is this is this my purpose is my purpose just to fight is it just for war and anakin basically says like you're missing the point like the, there, there's a bigger point here you're missing the point and they have a second, they have a, another big fight. This time it isn't light side Anakin, it's dark side Anakin, where his saber changes from Anakin's original lightsaber of blue to Vader's. And we hear a little bit of the Vader theme. His voice begins to modulate to sound more like Vader. There's some lightning flashes that get up for us a while. It's so great because it lightning flashes into him being Vader and so, so great. And his costume also changes too. Like in this whole time, Hayden Christensen is knocking out of the park here. Just, just, it, just, it, in a sense, not in a sense, just overall, Hayden Christensen knocking out of the park. And the de-aging on him actually looked really good, I will say. It actually looked very, very good. I think they used it very, very well here, beyond the fact that Hayden Christensen just aged really well as well. But he looked really good. And we get to see him in his, in his actual animated Clone Wars outfit, which I don't think we've ever seen live action before so seeing Chris, uh, Hayden Christensen as that is great seeing Hayden Christensen actually as Anakin talking to Ahsoka in live action also big deal that's very very big deal but then it gets to, to in the second fight that they do it it's it's him in his like Revenge of the Sith outfit in his, in his dark side outfit um and they fight and the whole time he's basically saying Ahsoka like you're missing the point what is the point of this what is the point of this Eventually, Ahsoka learns the point is to live. 
it is too late. And it, it, it's a bit vague. It's a bit like open interpretation of what exactly he means by that. But his his point is to live. And I, I personally believe that his whole deal there, because because he's the master, because he, he is her he's her teacher, he's her master, all his knowledge, all of his being gets passed down to her, just like from Obi Wan to him and Qui Gon to Obi Wan, you know, and all this, so on and so forth. And Ahsoka was interpreting that as, oh, well, if you're destined to become bad, to become Vader, then that means I'm destined to become something bad as well, if I'm basically taking on your your role. And that's not what he was trying to teach her. What he was trying to teach her, I think, in my interpretation of it, was you're supposed to become the best version of yourself. And you are inherently good. You are good. I was not inherently good. Yeah, you know, quote unquote. I was not inherently good. You are. So you need to live in order to become the best version of yourself. Where she does. She gets rescued by Hera and, and Teva Teva and all them. And that's basically their story. The the B plot of this is is Hera, Captain Teva, and um Hu Yang and Jason and Chopper trying to find Hera. Or <laughs> trying to find Ahsoka. That's what they're doing. They're just like they're just like scouting the planet or scouting the ocean trying to find Hera uh, trying to find Ahsoka. I keep on Hera. Trying to find Ahsoka. And Jason realizing, oh, he has force powers. <laughs> he can he can hear them in the world between worlds. He can sense them in the force, um, which is cool. They actually we actually get a name drop of Kanan. So great we get a name drop of Kanan. Love it. But he's starting to feel his force powers, which are really cool. And and they find Ahsoka. They they find Ahsoka. And that's like the entire B plot. The entire B plot is just them looking for Ahsoka and then going back to Ahsoka in the world between worlds, like doing her actual plot stuff, which is really cool. However, when she comes back, she wakes up and she's wearing all white, and she's now full Jedi Master Ahsoka. She is Ahsoka the White, just like with the with the Gandalf comparison, where she is now reborn as this all powerful. Jedi, where she is fully, uh, like, fully taken in and learned the lessons of Anakin and become a Jedi. She is Ahsoka the White, which is really, really cool. And then the end of the episode, I'm skipping over some stuff here, but then the end of the episode, they basically are like, how can, like, can we find Sabine? Is there any way we can find Sabine? And Ahsoka, uh, has a thought, like, starts thinking, she starts, like, trying to, like, relive the memory, kind of, a, she's doing some, 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 like, Jedi stuff, you know? And they find out that uh, um, Skull and, and Hati and Morgan Elizabeth took Sabine to the other galaxy to find Thrawn. They took him there. So it's like, okay, how do we follow him then? And she sees a Purgle. She sees a Purgle. And she's like, I got an idea. It's a stupid idea, but I got an idea. And they start, you know, doing the idea. And it's a stupid idea, but it is it is like a peak Rebels idea, I will say. This, this idea is peak Rebels, and I loved it so much because it had the Purgle in it. But the Republic comes, the New Republic comes, they're trying to, they're trying to, the, to block them because they, they're trying to block them. Um, they can't send any help because they're like, hey, you're already on this unsanctioned mission anyway, you don't have any proof of anything, even though Hera is right the whole time, and, and all that. And Ahsoka, being, being now all-powerful Jedi Master Ahsoka, uh, talks to the Purgle. <laughs> She just talks to the purple and is like, hey, yo, can we, can you just like eat us real quick? And then just like, pew, just like hyper space, uh, hyper jump to, uh, to the other galaxy, please, on your migration path. And that's what they do. <laughs> like, they just fly Ahsoka's ship into the mouth of a big purple, sit there, and then the purple just takes off. And Huey Yang has a great, has a great point, uh, has a great line where he's like, so do you know where they're going? And Ahsoka's like, no. It's like, you don't know where they're going? It's like, no, they're going somewhere. It's like, how do you not know where they're going? It's like, I, I don't know where they're going. But hey, anywhere's better than not going anywhere. And there's this phenomenal moment where like Huey just like turns to the camera, just like stares at the camera, is like, what have I got myself into? Why am I here right now? What am I doing? And the episode ends with Hera uh, telling Ahsoka, may the force be with you, you know, good luck finding uh, Ezra and Sabine and finding our friends. And then we get to see the Purgle in live action do a hyper jump, and it's it's so cool. As, as someone who watched Rebels, it's so cool actually seeing that in in live action and it looking the exact same and be like, this is so cool. This is just a really cool thing. This episode was a lot, okay, just based on like that that basic summary and stuff and and all that. This episode was a lot, and what I really felt from it was a massive character growth for Ahsoka, and. While we while we still haven't gotten the reason that Ahsoka felt so different in this series and why her and Sabine had like a rift between them and why Ahsoka felt kind of like alone, we haven't had we haven't got any of that. What we did get, however, is we got massive character growth. And actually, I guess we kind of did get a little bit of why she felt like that. Is like she started feeling like she was becoming Anakin 
but in a bad way where she was where she felt like well if if my master is going to become this ultimate evil of vader and it with having a pad one if i take on a pad one i become a, a master as well well, I do the same thing. So maybe that's why she kind of went away from the Sabine. They don't, they don't explain that all. That's just me theorizing and, and, and being being in a, a slight sick state, uh, thinking stuff, just my brain going, uh, ADHD brain going off on firing all cylinders here. So anyway, this episode was really, really good. And it showed a lot of character growth for Ahsoka, especially this version of Ahsoka, this very much mature version that Rosario Dawson is playing where it's like, yeah, no, she is a master Jedi now. She she fully understands what, what what's going on. She understands herself and she understands that she isn't destined to become this great evil like Anakin was. She is not she she's not beholden to a destiny at all. She's beholden to herself. And that's honestly kind of a, a really important message for everyone to take away from this from this series and from this episode is hey, don't be beholden to, to what you think is your destiny. Just become your most true, authentic self, everyone. That's uh, that's what it's all about. So I'm I'm extremely excited for the rest of this season and to see how they land this season because it's we only have like three episodes left, I think. Because I think there's eight episodes in the season, we're on episode five, so I think there's only three episodes left. So it's going to be very intriguing to see how they land this series. And I for I firmly believe at this point they are going to be able to land it very well. I firmly believe they're going to be able to land it just because like Dave Filoni has shown throughout this entire series that he knows what the hell he's doing with these characters especially Ahsoka which is his baby he knows what to do with Ahsoka so I am very excited to see them actually go to this new galaxy to see Thrawn again to prob I would imagine seeing Ezra as well seeing how they've grown seeing how they've changed and setting up the future of this like in between time period between Jedi and force awakens this this in between time period of like this is un this is uncharted territory we we this is this is this is completely new territory here we don't know what's going on here so it's going to be very intriguing to see them set that up especially set up de filoni's movie he's going to have some time whenever that happens now at this point to end it all which is going to be very very cool to see but this episode was very very good we didn't get a lot of of hera jason we got a decent amount of them moving like anything character wise with them which is fine that's completely fine this was a full ahsoka episode about ahsoka hitting us in the nostalgia field with having hayden christensen back being anakin and it being so we also got captain rex we got a very brief captain rex <laughs> very very brief captain rex where he was in the full clone wars get up and we heard him it was Tamir Morrison. We heard him. So it was Captain Rex. We got him in the series finally. Yeah, this this episode was really great. If I had any critiques, this is just a critique mainly about the show, is that we're not getting the Rebels crew meeting up, hopefully, with Ezra in the, in the other galaxy. It's just going to be Ahsoka and Hu Yang. It's fine. I hope we still see Zeb in the series at some point. I hope we do. We're not going to at this point. <laughs> like, we're not going to. We're not going to see the Rebels crew at this point, probably going forward, unless it's like the very end of the episode, like the very end of the season. But we'll see what happens. But either way, that's going to be my spoiler review of this episode. Uh, overall final thoughts is that it was phenomenal. It was a great, phenomenal, uh, phenomenal episode that I, I really love. This was honestly one of the best, I feel like, best episodes of Star Wars they've done in quite a long time. And I... I firmly think this is one of the best episodes of the live action series of Star Wars, especially the Disney Plus series, right up there with a lot of episodes from Andor. I'm still putting Andor at my number one Star Wars series right now, right behind Rebels. Um, still putting Andor right there at the top. So this episode alone was matching like the entirety of Andor, just just with it all. And I'm I'm very excited to see how Ahsoka lands. Very 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 excited to see how the show lands. But either way, if you watch this episode already, let me know down in the comments what you think about this episode of Ahsoka and where do you think they are going with these last three episodes and what do you hope to see in the last three episodes as well. And also just in general, just what do you think about this episode? Like just how how excited were you? during this episode because i was i was so hyped for this whole episode so just let me know that down in the comments as well and if you like this review as well and you want to see more leave a like it definitely helps out with the reviews uh, with the algorithm and getting the videos noticed and the youtube algorithm and everything in the channel to grow a little bit more as well and if you want to help the channel grow as well and you have not done so yet 
uh, leave a little subscription down below. That definitely does help out. It truly means a lot to me and helps the channel and this community uh, that I've that I've tried to build and we've all tried to build together grow into something uh, really cool, really cool. So if you want to do that, subscribe as well. It definitely does help out. And if you want to see more from the channel, right over here is going to be another playlist of another Star Wars thing you can watch. Go ahead. It'll probably be Andor actually because I just mentioned Andor. So go go have watch Andor. Go have watch my reaction to Andor. They're pretty good. And over here is going to be a video that you should recommend for you as well. Until next time, just stay Star Warsing, stay true to yourself, and I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Till then. May the force be with you.